Hi, and welcome back to the race coordinator race configuration um, tutorials. It's more of a saga than a tutorial at this point. There's been a lot of uh, previous parts. This is part five or six, something like that. Um, as you can see here, um, we're going to pick up right where we left off. And as you can see, we left off in the start setup. Um, we had just finished false start penalty, and we're going to move on to the um, start delay. We're going to talk about that one next. Just to uh, remind you, this tutorial is not about setting up a specific race or getting really in-depth into these properties. We're just talking about them at a high level, what they do, how they interact with other properties, and how they behave. In future tutorials, we will um, target specific race formats and even specific properties to demonstrate how to set them up, what they do, what changing values does. We'll show you all the effects of setting up those specific properties and those specific race formats. But for here, we're just going to get through as many properties as we can, talking about them at a high level, so that you have an idea of what exactly what race coordinator can do. Um, so with that said, we're going to pick right up and we're going to start on the start delay property. Um, this property is a time in seconds that is a um, is an amount of time to wait before starting the start sequence when it should come up. So if the race director says start race or the auto start timer um, goes to zero, this time delay will happen um, before the race starts or before the start sequence starts. Um, what's it useful for? If the race director is in the race and racing, for example, maybe you're racing alone, maybe you have you don't have enough people for marshals and, and to run the track, um, and you're not using other mechanisms to regulate starting and stopping uh, uh, the race, uh, specifically starting it, um, like the, um, the track call button can be used to do this, um, or the auto start timers, but maybe you're not using those, and you need to give the race director time to, say, start the race and then run over and get to the driver stations. That's all it's for. Um, that's it. It's pretty simple. It's just a convenience thing. Um, it defaults to zero. Um, most people probably won't need it. I used to use this value, but now that the call buttons um, actually act as, you know, work as race director functionality and race coordinator, um, as well as the auto start and auto advance um, timers, there's somewhat little need for this property anymore, at least for me. Um, but it's there, and if you want to use it, go crazy. The start randomizer is a time in seconds that will randomize the delay between the final second countdown and the actual green flag. So the normal, the default sequence will be five, four, three, two, one, go. And those will happen one second apart because that's what it's counting down. However, if you set this value to say five, that'll be five seconds and it'll randomly pick a number between zero and five seconds to wait before it starts, before it actually goes one and then the go. There'll be a nice delay there. Now, the purpose of this randomizer is simply to, um, um, if you're using a hot start and you're you're counting false starts and you're interested in reaction time and things like that, this randomizer makes reaction time much trickier because you don't know it's going to be five, four, three, two, one, if one second right after another. It's going to be so amount of time after that last one before the race goes, and so you really have to pay attention and hit on the stick. It was a feature requested by some users, and so we put it in. I don't particularly use it, but it is a fun thing that makes. Um, makes false starting and makes hot starting a lot more interesting. The race delay, restart delay rather, is analogous to the start delay, only this is for race restart. So in the middle of a heat, um, if there's a yellow flag, um, what comes up is something that looks exactly like the start set, the, the start sequence, the start lamps. Um, however, it is technically the restart lamps, um, and uh, this is that same delay that you can put on it. So before it starts counting down, it'll wait however many seconds you put in there, giving the race director time to get back to the track or, or get back to his driver's station. Um, the restart randomizer is the same thing. I'm not so certain this is a very useful property because race restarts basically have to be done with a, uh, with a, with a cold start. The track power should not be on during a restart after a yellow flag because there's no way to detect false starts because cars will be halfway through a lap or wherever they are on the track on the restart. And so if, it's a, if, if the track is hot, you know, a driver could drive all the way over to the beginning of the, of the you know, to, to where the race sensor is. So I've never personally used this, but it is analogous, and it, it felt good to put it in there as, um, for, for to, you know, to be um, parallel or in sequence with the start stuff. So the restart stuff and the, and the start um, properties are balance each other out, even if they're not hugely useful to the user. So that's it for setting up the start sequence. Um, there's a little bit more, and we'll get into that. Um, in a different tutorial, actually, um, showing you how to change the, uh, 
the start lamp sequence from like five lights to ten or seven or two or one and making them vertical and all that stuff. That'll all be in a different tutorial, but for now, we've seen enough of the start sequence. Um, the next property we're going to talk about is group setup. Um, I'm going to go through this really quickly because, uh, one, I only have about five minutes left in this tutorial, and also this is a really complicated feature in Race Coordinator, so much so that it's probably the most complicated feature in Race Coordinator. Um, it's a very useful thing. It's really cool once you understand what to do with it, but um, it's hard to set up, and so there's going to be a very specific tutorial on setting up just grouping. Um, it won't set up a specific race format. It is just going to set up groups and explain exactly how grouping works. But for grouping, um, there are several properties. Um, the first thing you have to do is you have to turn them on. You just use the use grouping property will do that. If you don't have the use grouping property turned on, none of the other grouping properties make any difference. So you can change them all you want. If the use groups property is not turned on, they will not affect your heats. Your, they will not affect your race. Nothing will be changed. Um, your maximum groups property is exactly what it sounds like. Um, you can limit race coordinator. Um, again, in the, in, the, in the more detailed tutorial, we'll talk about this in depth, but um, race coordinator calculates how many groups it needs based on your configurations, the other properties, specifically allowing empty lanes, forcing multiple. Um, these two properties here will, will dictate how many groups race coordinator wants to use. However, you can limit it to a maximum number of groups. Um, in this case, the default value is two. Um, that ends up being very useful if you're trying to, like, for example, force two groups, two and only two groups. Um, if you're trying to, you know, force a specific situation where, for, say, for example, you have the same number of groups as your uh, lane count. Race coordinator can only do that if you limit the number of groups it has, and it's just a very useful property for that. Again, we'll get into this later in more, much more detail. Um, allowing empty lanes is, is another, another property that um, controls how the drivers are placed into the groups and more specifically how a, a new group is allowed to be created. Um, specifically, it, it, it basically says that a new group can't, if, if allow empty lanes is unchecked, it basically says you can't, race coordinator will not create a new group until there are enough drivers in the race such that, or in, in each gr current group such that um, every lane will be occupied in the heats for that group. So in a case of a round robin race with grouping, you would need you would need in a four lane track, you would need um, doing the math in my head here real quick. I think you'd have to hit hit eight drivers before it would create a second group. So seven drivers with this unchecked would all be put into the first group because otherwise you would need empty lanes in one of the two groups for the round robin event. Because one if you had seven drivers, you'd have four in one group and three in another. There's obviously on a four-lane track, there's going to be an empty lane. That's no good. Um, so on the eighth driver, what it would do is it would put four drivers in the first group, four drivers in the second group. Now you've got two full round-robin sequences on a four-lane track, and everything's okay. Again, it wouldn't create a third group until you got up to 12 drivers, because then you could have four, four, and four again. Um, again, we're going to go into this in a lot of detail later, but for now, that's, that's pretty much good enough. Um, force multiple is an interesting property. What it does is it allows... It forces um, um, the number of groups um, to be a multiple of the maximum groups allowed. So if you set it to two, for example, it really doesn't do anything because that means that the, uh, the number of groups will either be one or two because one and two are the only two multiples of two. But if you set the maximum groups to, say, four or eight or nine, let's use nine as an example, um, then let's use eight as an example because that's actually a more interesting one for normal track configurations. Um, if you have, if you set this to, if you set the, the maximum groups to eight, and you force multiple, what that means is that the group count will always be either one, two, four, or eight, um, because those are multiples of, of the group count, or the maximum group rather property. Um, what that's useful for is is forcing the number of drivers that can advance um, into into the next heat, and we'll get into this again. And I'm running out of time, so I'm going to blast through this now. Um, balance seeding dictates how you how you place the drivers within the groups based on the driver seating. So if balance seating is checked, driver one goes in group one, two into two, three into three, four into four, and then it wraps back around to group one. So you get an even distribution of the seeds into the groups. If it's unchecked, you get all the top seeds in the first group, the second set of top, the next highest seeds into the second group, the next highest into the third, the lowest seeds into the last group. Um, just just the way you can do it. We'll talk about this again more in detail later. Um, 
minimum to advance is the minimum number of drivers to force to the top of the overall standings in the group. So if it's set to, set to one, for example, one driver from every group will automatically be at the top of the overall standings. It's as simple as that. That's all the time I have right now. Um, we'll get back to this later. Thanks.